Do you need a theme if you are working on a glue book or a junk journal? No, you don't, but it certainly makes things easier if you do have a theme. It's easier if you have a focus of papers and materials that you want to gather for this project that you're working on. So in today's video, I'm talking about eight inspiring themes for your glue books and junk journals to give you a whole bunch of ideas, hopefully, that will help you with your own projects. All right, I've got all these junk journals and glue books on my desk to show you examples of some inspiring themes. And the first theme I want to talk about is dedicating an entire junk journal or glue book just to color. Now you've possibly seen me already talk about this particular uh, junk journal glue book that is dedicated just to the color red. So anytime I come across something that I think will work in this junk journal, and notice sometimes it's just a tiny little something in red, I stick it in here. I put it in the back or just leave it loose here. This one, for example, is also loose. Um, I don't know quite what I'm going to do with it yet, but I do know that it goes somewhere in this journal. I have another journal that I like, this one, for color. This journal, when I started creating it, I was looking for things that had a cream colored, beige colored, neutral color that I could add into here, right? So sometimes it was just a piece of washi tape or a little image that I cut, cut out from a magazine or a little piece of something from a um, book, book page, right? And they were just little things, little pieces of things. And then I just, you know, over time, this book built up into something that is more cohesive, just based on that theme of this beige color. I even used things like envelopes and used a piece of washi tape at the back where the sticky part was. And even things out of catalogs. This little thing came from, I don't know, pieces of rug or, or something out of catalogs. So this has been a fun little book that I've been working on. And if I have a place like a pocket, you know, then I could just keep on adding things if I want, you know, to, to do so. The next theme I want to talk about is places. Maybe you have a bunch of papers that you've collected when you went on vacation somewhere, or you've been dreaming about going somewhere and you have images that you save, like for example, if you're dreaming of going to Paris one day. I have a, a junk journal glue book that I set aside just for um, when I go to Slovakia and the Czech Republic. I have things like bus tickets or um, you know stuff that I get for my kids. I don't have a whole lot, but this is the place where I put things when I do go on holiday there. I also picked up some pattern paper and, you know, teas, word games or games that you find in little magazines, just little fun things that I come across on my trip. So I also have a lot of blank pages, which means that I can continue adding to this. For me, I don't feel it's necessary to finish a glue book right away. I am really happy to be able to just keep on adding pieces to it over the years. 
and if it's already in a book form, it can just go straight into my bookshelf until I'm ready to pull it out again and to add something else. Here is another glue book of a place. Mars is definitely a place, right? And what I did for this one was I collected pieces of papers, images that all had a space theme. I used a lot of postage stamps also and added to them with some layering of rubber stamps and just, you know, things that got I cut out of magazines or, well, here's Captain Picard. As you can see, this is more of a modern piece and then I used some vintage pieces. So it's a combination of the both. I really like this 60s style. This is from a 60s school book and then the postage stamp is from the 1980s. So I mix, I'm mixing the eras of time, but the whole theme of space just kind of pulls it together. The next theme I want to talk about is choosing a theme in a certain style. Say that you love clothes from the 60s or 70s, or you really love a particular architectural style, right? You can create a glue book or a junk journal devoted entirely to this style. Now for this glue book, I chose um, images of French furniture. And I, each one of these collages has a piece of furniture in it. And that's the whole theme for this glue book, right? I had a piece of furniture and then I would take the color and then you know, try and match up elements that would kind of go with those colors. Here, for example, I'm using a lot of blues to pull out the blue in this chair. Here I've got this kind of pink red. So that is the theme for this glue book. Another kind of theme for your junk journal or glue book is about a person or people. Some people love Jane Austen. Some people love the Bronte sisters, right? You can create a whole junk journal devoted to, the, to that theme. Here I created a junk journal dedicated to my grandmother. So I pulled out a lot of um, sewing notions and things that she had and then created this junk journal with them. I also had a lot of buttons. So I made button cards and doilies, right? Just anything that I could find that would go in this sewing theme and then, you know, used pictures or things that belonged to my grandmother. This junk journal is devoted to women, women past and present, near and far who are active in their pursuit of their dreams or finding the simple joys in life. So I found some really awesome vintage um, pictures. This, I put a little magnet on the back of a uh, watch face and have the magnet, also the other half of the magnet underneath this postcard. But the photos I managed to find, I found these, I think on Flickr. Um, they're just really awesome photos. Look how fun this is. Right? So I got a whole bunch of photos and then collaged and made pockets and things where I could put the photos in. have you know little envelopes and things 
Here's another really pretty photo. Another type of theme for glue books and junk journals is based on an activity. You could do something on dancing. You could do something on reading with books and images from libraries and so on and so forth. This one is with sewing. So I did this with layers of material and with paper sewn together. So I have lots of, of examples of stitching and hand stitching, um, any, you know, pieces of lace, right? So any time, any opportunity to show examples of sewing and stitching, I have it in here. Another theme can be based on anything that you have a lot of. Say that you have saved up lots of images of butterflies or birds or think of stuff that you have in your creative space. What have you been saving that you have a lot of? For me, it is postage stamps. I'm always playing around with postage stamps and so I have lots of stamps that I like to use when I am creating these kinds of glue books. I also have this junk journal with lots of postage stamps in it that I've kind of done with more collage with other kinds of papers, including um, papers that came from a stamp catalog. But I also have pockets with, you know, other postal themes in envelopes and postcards and things like that. Another kind of theme that is good for a junk journal or glue book is one that is curated already from a printable, a downloadable printable collage kit. There are so many printable kits that you can get online through Etsy and I have a couple on my desk just to show you what I mean depending on the color scheme they use or the images that are chosen you can find things in your collection that can add to this and it's so helpful if you don't have a lot of your own materials to work with Printing out something like this can really move you along in putting together a glue book or a junk journal. Now, if you don't have a printer at home, you can always print at a local print shop close to where you are. You can upload the file online and do it that way or move the file onto an external drive and bring it to your local printer, there's always ways that this can be done. So the nice thing about working with printables is that the images and the color scheme has already been chosen, right? So you can use this, something like this, as the foundation for what you want to highlight in your junk journal or glue book and then use your own materials on top as an additional layer to this at the base. These are all examples from Ephemera's Vintage Garden. They happen to be ones that I still have a couple left over. Um, they're really unique and inspiring as far as color themed themes go. So these are a lot of fun to work with. Now the last theme I want to talk about is one that I don't even have an example to show you for, and that is a theme for holidays or for seasons of the year. So I have this envelope full of stuff that I collect every time someone sends me something that is holiday related 
I have a lot of old Christmas cards, of course, but then I also have stickers and um, punch outs. I have some of these um, old stamps and just tags, right? So I've been setting all of these things aside and sometime in the future, I will start creating a junk journal and then use all of these things to decorate those pages. I just, I just haven't found the time or I haven't found, um, yeah, I just haven't found the time to put this together yet, but it's definitely something I'm going to work on. Now, you probably saw my very sophisticated method for holding on to these pieces, which is not sophisticated at all. The other thing that you can do is take a box or, you know, any kind of box, a shoe box, one that has two lids that you can separate and then have two things that you can nest one on top of the other. Um, this one just happens to have a lid. This is a box that I use for my spells and potions glue books with all my paper pieces inside, right? So whatever kind of method works best for you is the method that you should use for saving and collecting your pieces that you can use as a theme for a glue book or a junk journal. So what other topics or themes am I missing? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you the next time.